In this tutorial, we will learn how to animate the color of a fire simulation and synchronize it to a sound input to create an effect like this. And we will use the EV engine in Blender for this. Let us start with a blank new file. We will use this default cube as the domain object, so let us enlarge it a little bit. In the object properties, change the X and the Y scale factor to 6, and the Z scale factor to 3. So, this will be the domain of our fire simulation. To convert it into a domain, go to the physics tab, and turn on its fluid properties. In the type field, please select domain. Then scroll down. In the domain type, we have to select gas. We can increase the resolution divisions to 64, or any higher value. Then come down and enable this adaptive domain option. We can now remove these buoyancy and the heat factors, as we need our fire to just spread horizontally. Let us make them as zero. We don't need any smoke either. But we can increase the vorticity factor, maybe to 0.25. That's all we basically need to set up for the domain object. Now, we will look at it from a top view. Our camera needs to be placed at an angle like this. So press 7 on your number keypad to go to the top view, we will set up the actual camera later. We need a flow object here for the fire. So, go to the add menu, and add one UV sphere. In order to convert it into a flow object, enable its fluid properties in the physics tab. In the type field, please select flow. Then, in the flow type, let us select only fire. Change the flow behavior to inflow. Then, turn on this initial velocity. We need this because we want the fire to spread outward with a speed, away from its center. So we need to enable the initial velocity, along its normal. We can go with some high value. But, we actually want this velocity to fluctuate, based on an input audio file, so that the amount of fire will directly follow the pattern of the input sound. So, click on this icon to insert a keyframe for this velocity. Then we have to open the graph editor, from this menu option. You can see that the normal velocity is visible in the list of the key sets here. Now go to the key menu, and select bake sound to F curve. Then go to the location where you have your audio file, for the input. And, you can go with these default settings. Or, if you want, you can increase this attack time to 0.2, just to remove the minor vibrations in the audio pattern. Then click on Bake Sound. So, we get an F-curve like this, but we need to enlarge it in the Y dimension, to get a velocity as high as 100. So go to the key menu again, and select Bake Curve, and accept this warning. Again go to the key menu, and unbake the curve. This converts our F-curve so that we can edit the control points as we wish. To enlarge the curve, press S, then Y, then 200, and then press Enter. As a result, we got the curve stretched in the height. This is necessary because by default the curve height is too low, but we need the normal velocity in the range of 100. The height is now good, but we need to move it up. So this time press G, then Y, then move your mouse upward, like this. Leave some gap with the zero line, so that we get some velocity even at the bottom of the curve. Edit the curve until it looks perfect. Then, go back to the 3D viewport. Remember, we have to reset the simulation data for the changes to take effect. So select the domain object. Let us make some cosmetic changes in the resolution divisions, so that Blender is forced to refresh the cache files. Then start the simulation. So, we can see the fire building up nicely. But, the fire is very dense in the center. What we want is, there should be a hollow area in the middle, and the fire should spread out. It should actually come out, instead of accumulating in the center area. So let us stop the simulation. We need to edit the flow object. Please hide the domain for the time being. Now, select the flow object, and go to the edit mode. We will force the fire to come out only from this middle section. So turn on the face selection mode, and deselect everything. Then, select any two faces in the equator region like this. Press the Shift key and the Alt key together, and click twice near the border, to select the face rings. If it seems difficult, you can just manually select them one by one, 
and make two such rings around the middle section of the sphere. Then go to this object data tab and click on this plus button. So a new group is created here. Let us rename this vertex group as smoke group. Now turn on the vertex selection mode. So all the vertices within this selected area are now selected. We will group them together under this vertex group. So click on this assign button. Now go back to the object mode. Then in the physics tab for the flow object, you will see one field called the vertex group. In this list, please select the smoke group, which we just created. As a result, the fire will now generate only from this area, leaving the intersection as void. Back to our top view mode, we need to bake the fire simulation once again, for the changes to take effect. So select the domain object and also unhide it. Okay. Then under the physics tab, scroll down below, and here, in the cache type, we have to select modular, and also turn on the is resumable option. Then go up, and bake the data. You can see the progress here. Once the baking is complete, please hide the flow object. Then, go back to the first frame, and play the simulation. The fire simulation is now perfect, but it has a single color. We will synchronize it to an input audio file and animate the color of this fire based on the rhythm of the sound file. So stop the simulation and let us turn on the rendered view mode. You may not see anything here because we are yet to set up a suitable material for our domain object. While the domain is selected here, go to the materials tab. We have the default material here, which we need to edit in the shader editor. So. Let us split the screen into half. Then, open the shader editor in the left-hand side panel. By default, we have one principal BSDF node and a material output. But for a smoke or a fire simulation, we need a volume shader. So delete this principal BSDF and add one principled volume shader. Connect its volume to the volume input of the material output. Now you can see a faint smoke but we need the fire, or the flame here. For that, we have to increase this blackbody intensity. Let us change it to 10. And you can see the fire. Or, you can even increase this further, maybe to 15. But we need only the fire, we don't want any smoke to be present in our scene. So, reduce this density value to 0. Now, there will be no smoke, we will have only the fire. We will now change the color of this fire, based on an input sound file. For that, we have to play with this blackbody tint. So, we need to add few more nodes. Let us make some room here. First, under the input group, add one RGB node. Then again go to the add menu, and from the color group, add one hue saturation node. In the RGB node, please change the hue value to 0.5. Then increase the saturation to full 1, and the value to also 1. Then connect its output to the color input of the hue saturation node. We have to play with this hue value for our desired effect, by binding it to the input audio stream. We will then simply connect its color output, to the blackbody tint of our principal BSDF. The fire will then take a different color. If you now increase or decrease this hue value, you can see that the color of the fire is also changing accordingly. So, we have to bind it to the audio file, let us keyframe this. While the mouse is on this field, press I on your keyboard to insert a keyframe for this. Let us then open the graph editor in this panel. Please select the domain object. Now you can see an entry for the material, under which we have the key for the hue value. But it has an offset, we are not at frame number 1. So let us go to the first frame. Now go to the key menu and select Bake Sound to F Curve. Select the same audio file which we selected earlier. You can change the attack time to 0.2. The other fields are just good. So click on Bake Sound to F Curve. Let us expand this section little bit to create more space for the graph editor. So we can see that the F Curve is made perfectly, but the height of the curve or the intensity is quite small. We have to scale it up in the y direction so that the peak of the curve is close to the value of 1, as the hue should fluctuate between 0 and 1. 
So go to the key menu and select Bake Curve. Then again go to the key menu and unbake the curve. We will increase it in the height. So, press S on your keyboard, then Y, then type 1.5, and enter. Then press G, then Y, then move your mouse, so that the peak value is near to 1, then click once to accept the changes. So, we are done. We can finally close this editor. The flame color should now change from frame to frame. Let us quickly verify this. So, go to frame number 40. We can see a green color. If you go to 50, you will get red. Or 75. We can see a different color, it follows the F-curve we made. We have to now prepare our camera and the environment for the render and the final output. So go to the World tab and change the background color to complete black. Then go to the Camera View mode. We want the camera to look at it directly from the top, so that we get a top view angle. So, select the camera object, and go to its properties. Set all the location values to zero. Also, remove its rotation values. Then change the Z location to 20, to capture the entire fire simulation. Or, we can probably go with 25. This will depend on the size and the scale of your domain. Then in the Output tab, we have to mention the output parameters. Like we have to select the Video Output option here. We have to mention the Output folder and other parameters as well. With all these, we will get the visual part in the render. The audio file then needs to be added to the output. And we will get the final result something like this. So, that was a quick guide on how to animate the flame color in a smoke and fire simulation and how to synchronize it to any audio file. I hope you like this tutorial. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.